Hi friends, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel, Life Between Words. We are going to do a video today. Well, I am. I have been wanting to do this video for so long, but I was kind of intimidated by pulling together all of the books because it's a lot. I really want to um, talk about all of my unfinished series. This is not all of my unread series, just the books on my shelf that are part of a series that I um, have started but haven't finished, and there are quite a few. I've never taken stock of the number of series that I'm in the middle of. I'm not including series that I don't plan on finishing, like The Raven Cycle. I only have one more book to read in that series, but I can't bring myself to do it, so I actually even unhauled those books because I have a real love-hate relationship with them. Anyway, these are all series that I want to continue on in, but I haven't yet. Whew, let's, let's just get into it. I'm going to start with uh, some mystery series. Perhaps most obviously, um, because I talk about this series all the time. I love it. I only end up reading one or two books a year, and I don't know why. Um, it's Louise Penny's Armand Gamache mystery series. I actually don't even, is it called the Three Pines series? Armand Gamache? I actually don't even know what the series is called. This is the first book, Still Life. I have read seven. There are many more books out now. I want to say there are like close to 15 books. Part of the reason that it takes me so long to read these series is because, read these books, is because I don't want to get to the end of the series. I don't want to have to wait in order to read the next book, and yet I'm still waiting like a year between every book, so I don't know why I do that to myself. It's really silly. This mystery series follows an inspector named Armand Gamache. Many of the murders that take place happen in this quaint little village outside of Montreal called Three Pines. I just love this series so much. I love the wisdom, I love the character development, I love the, the, the plots, I love Armand Gamache so very, very much. Oh, he's just one of my favorite people. I love Louise Penny's writing too. I decided not to get all of the other books that I own from this series off my shelf because it would just take too much time. The next series, I actually don't think that I'm going to read all the books in this series, but I'd at least like to read the rest of the books from the series that are on my shelf. And that is the Tana French Dublin Murder Squad series. This is the first book. It's called In the Woods. This is one of the first books I think I read on YouTube when I started my channel. I'm not sure that I want to keep going with it because I haven't loved all the books and and furthermore every book could be a standalone. You meet all of the characters or at least you usually meet the character that you're going to be following in the next book in the previous book so like you meet the character that you'll follow in the second book in this first book etc etc. It's not really a continuous story so I don't feel really compelled to pick all of the books in the series up, but I have a few on my shelf that I haven't read yet that I'd like to complete, so that's why I'm including this one. This is another mystery series, did I say that? And they all take place in Dublin, hence why it's called the Dublin Murder Squad. Another series that I haven't talked about in a very long time, and I think there are maybe five or six books in this series. I've only read the first one, and I read it in like, also probably my first year on booktube, and I have not picked another book up from this series since then, even though I'd like to. And that is the James Harriet memoir series about his life, James Harriet's life as a veterinarian in the Yorkshire countryside, I should say. So this first book was called All Things Bright and Beautiful, and I loved it. And I just never moved on in the series. This is just such a charming, charming book, and I think the rest of them are also charming. Um, they do get a little more harrowing, I think, because you do enter wartime. The second book that I own is called All Things Wise and Wonderful, and then the third one is called All Creatures Great and Small. Those are all lyrics from the famous hymn, All Creatures Great and Small. Wait, which one is the first one? No, I'm confused. Actually, the first one is All Creatures Great and Small. <laughs> and then it's these two, but I don't even know what order, so I'm, I'm confusing myself now. Needless to say, I'd like to keep going in this series. I'd like to complete the collection of this series too because aren't these just the most charming covers to go along with the most charming contents? The other thing about this series, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place, but the other thing I really love about this series is it's not only charming, it's also laugh out loud funny. It's just, it's really one of a kind. I've never quite read memoirs like this. And I love that it's a series because there also aren't very many series of memoirs that I've read. Another book series that I can't believe I haven't finished yet 
is The Three Rancheros by Kate DiCamillo. So these, this is The Three Rancheros. It starts with Ramey Nightingale, and then you have, this is, uh, and then you have Louisiana's Way Home. And then the book that I have not read yet is called Beverly Right Here. I got this at an event where I heard Kate DiCamillo speak. Um, obviously not this year because those kind of events don't happen in the year of the pandemic. As you can see, I'm not sure she in intended to write a series of books because the cover of the first one is very different than the covers of the next two. Um, I actually think they've even changed the cover of Ramey Nightingale and I kind of wish I had the cover that matches these because I just think these covers are so beautiful. This series follows three best friends. There's Ramey, Louisiana, and Beverly, obviously. It's the titles of the books. Each of these young girls have a troubling, um, fraught childhood, and I just really love them, <laughs> and I can't wait to finish the series. Maybe 2021 is the year? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. This next series, I thought I had completed, and then like 20 years after he stopped writing these books, he decided to keep going with the series. So that's Ken Follett's Pillars. I think the series is just called Pillars. The first one is Pillars of the Earth. Um, and then the next one, which I've also read, is called World Without End. I don't have that one in my pile here, but I do own it. I just didn't want to go searching for it because I actually don't keep, <laughs> I don't keep Pillars and World Without End together. I don't know why I don't keep Pillars and World Without End together on the bookshelf. Um, other than I really like this cover and I liked this book better than World Without End, so I keep this with all of my favorites on a bookshelf. I don't know. I know it doesn't make sense and I should probably keep the series all together, but I don't. Maybe when I have a bigger bookshelf. Then, a couple years ago, what year was this released? So in 2017, he surprised me by coming out with a new book in the series. You know what? I think it's called the Kingsbridge series, now that I think about it. Oh my gosh, I am so all over the place. But anyway, A Column of Fire, which takes place after the events of the first two books. And the books take place like hundreds of years apart. So the first one takes place in the 11th century, I'm pretty sure. The second one takes place in like the 13th century. And then this one takes place in the 16th century. After this book was released, I thought, oh, for sure, this is the end of the series. But no. This year, Ken Follett released a fourth book in the series. And this one is called The Evening and the Morning. This is the only one that I own in hardcover. Another tragedy for my book collector heart. Yeah, it's not a big deal. This one, The Evening and the Morning, is a prequel. So technically, this book comes before the events of Pillars of the Earth. I'll tell you what the first one's about. Pillars of the Earth is about the building of a cathedral, which sounds terribly boring, right? But it's not actually about the building of a cathedral. I mean, it, it sort of is, but it's really about the people involved in the building of the cathedral. It's very exciting because there's lots of things that happen to either prevent or propel the building of this cathedral. Gosh, I really loved this book. But anyway, this first book is when the, when the cathedral is being built, so I have no idea. I haven't even read the synopsis of this one. All I know is I haven't read it, but I loved Pillars of the Earth so much that I have to finish the whole series, so. There you have it. Let's do another middle grade series. The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street. When I read this book a few years ago, this was the only book out in the series. Either that or the second book had just been released, which is The Vanderbeekers and The Hidden Garden. This series is a lot like The Penderwicks in that it follows a family with lots of children. This one takes place in Harlem. I'm pretty sure Harlem in New York and Gosh, I, but it has the same sort of feeling and vibes as the Penderwick. It's a really lovable family. The other difference between this and the Penderwicks is that in this book, in this series, both the parents are alive and well, rather than a widowed father. Widowered father? Widowed? Widowered. Anyway, I only have the first two books, but I think there are like four books out in the series now, and I want to read them all. I know Krista from Books and Jams has read most of them and loves them. And I want to love them just as much. I want to know what happens to this lovely family. A few series that I'm ashamed to say I have not finished 
one is, wait, where is it? The Six of Crows duology. I only have one more book, obviously. It's a duology. So I've read Six of Crows. I have not read Crooked Kingdom. And it's been so long now that I feel like I have to reread Six of Crows. I don't read a ton of YA. I did really enjoy Six of Crows. I know I probably will enjoy Crooked Kingdom. I should just finish it. These covers are so cool, and I love the painted edges. So cool. Six of Crows follows a band of thieves, and this is a heist novel. The heist was sort of resolved in the first one, although it didn't end on a cliffhanger, although I don't even remember what the cliffhanger was. Um, so, yeah, I don't actually even know the premise of Crooked Kingdom or where the story goes. It's very unfortunate. Every winter, I have meant to continue on in this next series because it's a perfect wintertime fantasy series. It's the series by Catherine Arden. What is the title of this series? It's kind of going to bother me because I don't remember the title of this series. Nevertheless, the first book is The Bear and the Nightingale. The second book is The Girl in the Tower. And then there is a third book, and I think it's called The Winter Witch. I don't own that one yet. I kind of didn't want to get it until I read the second book, but that hasn't happened in two or three years, so... Whew, I'm very excited to read it, though. I hope I get to it this winter. We'll see whether that happens. Another wintertime series. And was also one that I didn't even realize was a series. I talked about this, actually, in my December TBR. That's A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig. There's, this, this book is a trilogy. When I read this first book, I didn't realize it was a trilogy. In fact, I'm not even sure it was a trilogy yet. I think maybe the second book had just recently come out when I read this. I don't know. But, um... It's a boy called Christmas, and then the girl who saved Christmas, and then Father Christmas and Me is the third one. I started reading the first, this one aloud again to my kids because I don't really remember a whole lot of what happens in it, but they sort of became uninterested. So I'm gonna have to finish it on my own, and I don't know if it's gonna happen this December or not. It's the kind of series that I have to read around Christmas since it's really a Christmas time series, so if it doesn't happen this month, it's not gonna happen until 2021. There are five books released so far in this next series, and that is the Corman Strike mystery series. The first one is Career of Evil, then The Silkworm, then Cuckoo's Calling, and then the books just get enormous after that, and I have not picked them up. So the fourth book in the series is Lethal White, and the fifth book in the series that I think was just released this year is called Troubled Blood. And this book is <laughs> enormous. It's so big. I'm not sure I've ever read a mystery novel that is so long. It's almost a thousand pages. Oh my gosh, is that even worth it? 927 pages, and yet I still really want to read it. I'm invested in these characters. We follow a private investigator named Cormoran Strike, and then his assistant named Robin. I can't remember Robin's last name right now. All the mysteries in each book are resolved, but there is sort of like an overarching plot that is becoming increasingly um, present. I'm eager to keep going. The size of these books intimidates me a little bit because mystery novels usually take a while for things to be revealed for the propulsion of the stories to get going so the fact that these are so long just makes me a little nervous but i still want to read them before i even started my booktube channel i read an ember in the ashes and i read it in like a day i was a new mom and this was the first this was like the book that got me out of that postpartum reading slump i read this book so fast so fast and I loved it. I loved all the characters. I loved the plot. I mean most of you have probably heard of this novel It's been or this series. It's been very popular on booktube and elsewhere. It's sort of a Roman inspired fantasy series. The second book is called A Torch Against the Night. These are like the original covers. They don't look like this anymore. The second, the third and fourth novels in the series um, have different covers. I don't own the third and fourth books yet, but I really do want to complete this series, and I think that I might just start reading them all over again, because I read this book in 2015, and I remember it vaguely, but there's a lot of details that are very fuzzy for me, so I really want to reread it before I keep going, and I hope that I love it as much as I did the first time, but you know, I'm in a different place. I'm like, in, I'm in a different headspace than I was then and this was just like the right book at the right time. I didn't like the second book quite as much as I loved the first one. So 
I don't know. I want to keep going though. I want to. The desire is there. All right, my friends. I also talked about this next series in my December TBR. I haven't heard too many people in the book world talk about it. Um, it's sort of a sleeper hit. Like the people who have read this series absolutely love it and never stop talking about it. But for those who haven't read it, most people haven't even heard of it. It was originally independently published and then it was picked up by Random House last year and re-released in these beautiful hardcovers. And n n you don't know what I'm talking about, so I'm just going to show you. So it's the Wing Feather Saga. The first book is called On the Edge of the Dark Sea of Darkness. The second book, which is still on my December TBR, is over there. And it is North or Be Eaten. And then it's the monster in the hollows and the warden and the wolf king this series like i said is very beloved so this series follows a family the four igaby children they live on the edge of the dark sea of darkness hence why it's called that they live in a town called glipwood and i think like the world or the country that they live in is called and here we are um like and here we are because that's what the first people <laughs> said I don't know like this book has a lot of silliness in it but one of the things that I've heard about the rest of the series is that it gets really um, intentionally uh, meaningful so this book isn't a Christian series but the author of this series is a Christian Andrew Peterson he's also a musician so there are Christian themes throughout this book in the same way that you'd find that you find Christian themes and imagery in the Chronicles of Narnia. I didn't see much of that in the first book, but I think as the story goes along and gets more complex, that's when you start to see some of these deeper analogies, deeper Christian themes and motifs. And then finally, I didn't really mean to leave this one for last, but there we have it. Um, a couple years ago, I read the first book in the Mistborn trilogy. The first one is called The Final Empire. And then last year in 2019, so it's been over a year now, almost two years, I started reading The Well of Ascension, but I was not in the right place for heavy fantasy, so I put it down. I want to pick it back up, and I feel like I remember enough of The Final Empire that I don't need to reread it. I maybe should get a refresher, but I really do want to finish this series. I don't know why it was that The Well of Ascension wasn't striking me at the time that I read it, but it just wasn't, and I wasn't going to force myself to read it because then I wouldn't enjoy it. And this book is too long to read and not enjoy yourself while doing it, so I'm going to try and reread it. Um, hopefully it'll happen this year because if I take much more time, I'm just going to have to, I'm going to forget everything and I can't, I can't let that happen. So there you have it. I have a feeling there are some series that I have forgotten about. How many of these I get to in 2021 is a mystery. These are not necessarily on my 2021 TBR, although I do reach for series that I'm reading quite often, so hopefully... Hopefully, I'll at least knock a few of these out. But I will probably also start more series in 2021, so I don't think I'll be in any better shape next year. Are you a series reader? Are you a series completer? Siri thought I was talking to her. I'm not talking to you, Siri. Let me know in the comments down below. Tell me one of your favorite series that you've read in the last two years. And did you read it all at once? Did you spread it out? Let me know. I'd love to talk about series that you have um, that you are in the middle of or that you've finished. Friends, this was an adventure. I've been so nervous to make this video and I just did it. I'm so glad. Don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'd love for you to stick around. This is not a goals video, but I'm just going to say it here. One of my goals for 2021 is to make at least one video a week. I really want to stay consistent with it because really, Making YouTube videos brings me a lot of pleasure. I love doing this. I love talking with you guys. And um, you really mean the world to me. So I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.